I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. First off, thanks for being here. Thanks for making it here. Uh, if uh, this is your first time uh, and, and you get inspired, you like what you hear, maybe you'll hit that subscribe button at some point in here. You can find us at all the major podcast hotspots like iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. We'll bring you brand new interviews every single week, uh, one on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three a week, so you can keep up with with all of your favorite artists, discover some new ones, know what's happening in the music world. I'm Kyle Mayer. Today I'm going to be talking with Kansas lead singer Ronnie Platt. The band is back with a new record called The Absence of Presence, an apt title considering uh, where we are in the world right now. Uh, Ronnie, this is his second album with the band, and uh, and he'll tell you there's some confidence that comes along with this one. I want to hear about what it's like to be a singer in a prog rock band, you know, how you find your spot as a vocalist in all of the musical madness that's usually going on, and how, you know, any of this music, if at all, has to speak to a band's legacy, you know, especially with a band like Kansas stretching all the way back to some of those mega hits of the 70s. Ronnie wrote the lyrics to one of the songs on here called Circus of Illusion. He'll talk a little bit about that. And again, that title, The Absence of Presence, of course we're going to bring that up and just the need to be present these days. So without further ado, let's jump in. It's Kyle Meredith with Kansas. Kyle, how are things in one of my favorite cities, Louisville? It's great to talk to you, man. You know, I should say first, congratulations, this new Kansas record with The Absence of Presence. I mean, it's a powerful record. You guys are doing some really interesting stuff on this. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, uh, it, it, we're so happy with it, and t- boy... To talk about some songs with some really intense uh, layering of parts, it was a lot of fun to record, a lot of a lot of fun to write. Yeah, you know, this being your second album with the band, you know, the previous being your first, was there a big difference for you? I mean, is there a different level of comfort or confidence that you're able to get from this, uh, assuming that there was even, um, you know, a version of that on the first one? Yeah, absolutely. You know. Uh, there was a bit of nervousness uh, with the prelude implicit because it was something uh, I, I wasn't expecting to do with the band. When I got the job, I had uh, no idea. Rich and Phil never uh, said to me when I initially met with them that they had uh, any ideas of doing new studio music. So it, it, it was quite the gift for me, but there, there was quite a level of nervousness. And now with the absence of presence, uh, having probably close to 500 shows under my belt with the band, uh, things are a lot more settled in and uh, more of a confidence level and uh, really a lot of fun. And, boy, we're really happy with the with the end product. With the type of music that Kansas makes, and I'll use Prague as the broad statement here, I mean, it's extremely intricate. As the singer, do you find it much of a challenge to find your place in a song when so much is happening? Yeah, you know, this... It, Nothing against my buddies in Cheap Trick, you know, but this isn't Cheap Trick music. <laughs> this is this is some pretty intense stuff, and you know, there's certain songs where, you know, you got to count, you got to count, you got to have that tempo in your head, and you got to know where one is because, uh, you know, there's constant uh, time signature changes, and it, sometimes it's a challenge. So, but it, it, it's part of progressive music, and it's. It's something that I've always always loved. I've always been a big prog rock fan. Uh, you know, starting with Kansas uh, probably initiated my love for prog rock, but, uh, you know, I became such a prog fan. I loved all the prog bands. I loved Rush. I, I, I loved Genesis. Yes, you know, I, I've always uh, gravitated towards the progressive bands. Well, you make it seem seamless, uh, th- that's for sure, you know, in, in, in this final product and everything. W- with this record, 
because the other side of prog rock, you know, you have the music. A lot of time there is a conceptual theme. It, it, does that uh, is that true for the absence of presence? Is, is there a theme that we'll be listening for uh, on the full album? You know, that's something that that kind of inadvertently happened. There might have been something in the writing that you know we were in a particular time or something, but there is a continuity between all the songs on the album, but it's not like we were consciously writing a concept album. Mm. But but it's something that uh, about this album that there's a close relationship between all the songs, but yet there's still quite a dynamic range of music. You, you've, you've got, to, to, to use the term prog, throwing mountains. Uh, a lot of people have said to me that they think that that's like a progressive metal song because it's that guitar riff is, is so heavy and so in your face. And then you have everything down, down the line in that musical genre, how, however you classify it. We go from throwing mountains to a song like Memories Down the Line, which is such a heartfelt ballad-type song where there's not so many over, overlapping parts. So it's... You know, it's it's part of the Kansas recipe of what we bring to the Kansas fan. You know, a little something for everyone. And it's 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 funny how <laughs> how I meet everyone and how everyone tells me their favorite song, and it's always something different. Sure, you've got a lot of people that love Wayward Son and and Dust and Point, but it, it's so strange to, to to have people come up to me and say, "Oh, my favorite song of all time is." no one together or nobody's home or you know one of these really deep cuts you know i love that do, do you, in that sense do you all find that it's important for the new music to have to speak to the band's legacy at all or is that even a thought you know i i, I don't think so and you know i've i've always said uh, zach and myself we've been such hardcore kansas fans our entire life and so influenced by kansas that you know, when we sit down to write a song, we're really not thinking, you know, to have that presence of mind of, oh, we're writing a Kansas song. You know, it's it's not in our conscious forefront. I think we've been so influenced by the band that when we do write something, it can't help but have elements of Kansas in it, even though we're not thinking that way. You're, uh, I think at least as far as the credits go, your biggest contribution here might have been with uh, the Circus of Illusion. I, I mean, lyrically speaking. How, can you tell me about that song and how it kind of fits into the set? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Circus of Illusion, you know, I, I wrote that uh, title and lyrics, and it's uh, a very storytelling type song. Uh, and one of the great things about progressive music is it's really open to self-interpretation. And I've said this so many times that, you know, when a, a person asks me, oh, when you wrote this song, you know, what were you writing about? And I always ask them, well, what do you think it's about? And, you know, they tell me their own interpretation. And I always tell them, you're exactly right. <laughs> because if that's how you interpret it, that's, that's my whole purpose right there, is to let let the listener have their own relationship with that song. And that's the great thing about progressive music. Well, I know that's definitely true as well for for the title, which has been talked about a lot with the absence of presence. Uh, regardless of what it was meant to mean uh, versus what it means now, and, and I've certainly pondered that one too, you know, not just in the absence of people actually present at a concert or something, but it does feel like we're having to be more present than we ever have in, at least I could feel in my lifetime. Uh, I'm sure that's not lost on the band, I'm guessing. Yeah, you, you know, we don't uh, claim any clairvoyancy because the title of this album uh, really came to being about a year and a half ago, but it, it's eerie in such a way that it's uh, it, it really is telling of what's going on right now. It, I mean, really, is there, there's an absence of presence everywhere because, you know, everyone has to stay home and, you know, uh, li limit their limit their outside activities. 
So there really is an absence of presence. Well, again, uh, Ronnie, it is a, a very powerful piece that you all have put in with this record. Uh, I love hearing new music from Kansas, uh, and I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. So thank you for keeping it going, and thanks so much for taking the time to talk about it today. It's been a real pleasure, man. Oh, same here. Kyle, thank you so much. I uh, want everyone to stay safe. Please uh, enjoy the absence of presence, and uh, please visit KansasBand.com, and uh, we hope to be back out very, very soon. All right, we'll see you in Louisville at some points. Thank you. All right. Take, yeah, take care, man. Bye. Bye now. My thanks. Ronnie Platt, Kansas. The brand new record is called The Absence of Presence. It's out now. Thanks to you as well for checking out this episode. Before you get out again, please do hit that subscribe button. If you're not already, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you like to get your podcasts from. Three interviews a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. After that, head over to WFPK.org. Now, that's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound has your music and film news. You can also find me Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Kyle Meredith. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media.